Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, we are going to be finally getting to do my review on my darling little Tudor Prince Date. Uh, I purchased this about a month ago. It's a used vintage piece. Just have a little closer look there. Absolutely gorgeous. If that will ever focus. Is that focusing? There we go. Anyway, you, you'll get to see it in a little bit closer in just a moment. But anyway, yeah, I purchased it about a month ago. I've been meaning to review it, so apologies. I, I've had so many reviews to do before this one. But finally, we get to have a closer look. Anyway, guys, wristwatch check done. Let's get on with the video. Now, before we get on with the hands-on review, I just wanted to talk a little bit about wristwatch size because this is definitely going to spark a lot of discussions in the, in the comments below. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you will be surprised at its small size. Others, others will be more open-minded. But at the end of the day, watch size really is relative to the, to the wearer, to the person sporting the watch. Now a lot of you might think this is absolutely too small uh, and that's quite understandable. For, for you it may be too small but I wanted to start this video with me actually wearing the watch so you get an idea of it in relation to me because at the end of the day it doesn't really matter what the size of the watch is. The most important thing is, is how it fits to the wearer. I really wanted to share with you some pictures I, I saw recently this is a, from an auction of Clark Gable's uh, wristwatches. He had two Rolexes and there was one particular one that really caught my eye and it was staggeringly beautiful and believe it or not it was only I think I think it was either 33 or 34 millimeters which is absolutely tiny and of course by today's standards really really tiny but it goes to demonstrate just how elegant a slightly smaller watch can be uh, and I think that the trend is kind of coming back we are seeing a kind of a lot of the newer releases are in more conservative traditional sizes of the last Basel world and I'm sure in the next Basel world next year's Basel world we'll see an even you know more a return to, to, to more kind of traditional sizes and I find this fascinating because some of the viewers have commented that there is something slightly um, not kind of old old school about me about the um, that I don't know if it's my hair or, 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 or because I like art deco antiques and, and stuff like that but uh, you know I'm, I'm, I'm quite old-fashioned in, in, in a lot of ways and my taste in watches is kind of kind of like that as well. I mean, obviously I like new pieces like G-Shocks and, and, and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, I really like very classic, traditional watches. And the size of this really is, and it is a bit loose because uh, I, I do wear it quite loose, but the size of this little Tudor really harkens back to watches from more towards the middle of the century. And I think, I think there is a real elegance. I mean, have a look at these images now that I'll bring up on the screen. And have a look at how elegant and how Clark Gable, who's still this kind of very masculine, very cool, very, t you know, this, this American iconic film star and how he sports this beautiful tiny little Rolex. And then let's compare it to something, watch trends of the last few years. And you can see in, in the images I bring up now, how much more elegant the tr more traditional size is. And I, I know there are a lot of you guys out there who, who won't wear anything less than 42, 40 mil millimeters in diameter. And that's perfectly fine. 
if that's what you're comfortable with and that's what you're 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 happy with then that's absolutely fine i'm not trying to convert you at the end of the day you must always wear what you want to wear but i do kind of want to try and avoid this thinking that smaller watches are in any way feminine or are not as sophisticated. In my, in my opinion, if you go a little bit smaller, it makes you look bigger. And it, it kind of... Clark Gable is the prime example. He, he's, he's still very masculine and still very kind of cool and carries it off really, really well. He doesn't need a giant watch. Some guys tend to think bigger is better because they're playing into an insecurity. They're almost kind of trying to make up for something. It's almost insecurity manifested. You don't have to go big all the time. There are exceptions, like, like diver watches, like the 50 Fathoms, for example, which is pretty huge. Uh, when I tried the 50 Fathoms on at Blanc Pan, I was really gobsmacked at how big it was. Aviation pieces are another example. Somebody commented recently that they prefer the larger sizes because they're a pilot and they need to be able to read time very quickly. That's completely understandable. In a professional setting, if you're diving or a pilot, and that's absolutely fine. Or if you just love bigger watches and that's what you feel comfortable with. What I want to kind of persuade or, or deter people away from is buying into larger sizes just because that's the trend. And then if you're very small wristed like me, uh, it, it, it is a bit of a faux pas. You know, I think a watch like this really is more kind of fitting to my scale and, and it doesn't look ridiculous. But of course, if a larger gentleman was to wear this, then it would look ridiculous. So it works both ways. Quite a few of you emailed wanting to know what the first kind of entry level luxury watch is for the smaller wristed. And I think the Tudor Prince is a real sweet spot. You can get some really good deals. I bought this from Hong Kong. I took a bit of a gamble, but I did my homework, I checked out the seller, he was highly reputable, experienced seller, been mentioned on various forums, his, uh, his feedback on eBay was 100%, he was based in Hong Kong, he provided all the paperwork, I did the check on the paperwork, and the it was a, a, um, a certified Tudor dealer where it was originally bought from. When I got the watch, I, I'll, I opened it up, I'll, I'll put a picture here, you can see the movement, uh, that it is what it is, uh, and every single piece of this watch is absolutely original, and it is indeed the watch that was bought from uh, Tudor or the Tudor dealer uh, in Hong Kong. So I was very lucky. I wouldn't recommend it if you're, if you're new to buying vintage pieces. I wouldn't recommend that you go down that road. However, my, my friend in Hong Kong, I've since kind of, you know, he emailed me and, and, and he was very, very professional and, and the tracking info and all the rest of it, extremely professional. He knows his stuff, he, he sells uh, a lot of Omegas, a lot of Tudors uh, and Rolexes and he knows his stuff and they are competitively priced and he's, a, he's completely kosher and I completely recommend him. I'll leave a link also, uh, as well as the strap manufacturer, I'll leave a link to this seller on eBay. Uh, because he does have some really good deals if you want to get a vintage uh, Datejust or a Speedmaster or something along those lines. He has those too, so it's absolutely fantastic. Actually, he has another one of these with a slightly different dial configuration. Anyway, so uh, it was a bit of a gamble, but I did my research, I did my homework, it paid off, and in the end, I got a really cracking watch. Now, this watch isn't going to be for everybody because of its small size. But again, you know, I want to make this point clear. The size is relative to the user. This is perfect for me. I mean, look, look at it on my wrist. It just, it sits perfectly. If we look at back at the pictures of Clark Gable, he had a watch even smaller than this. So, so why not? Why not? So I'm not saying that big watches are completely bad, but bear in mind that I think if with with something a little less, this is still quite this is still quite a sporty watch. But in general, I I think with more dressy pieces, everyday pieces, with the exception of dive watches and aviation watches, going with a more slightly smaller piece, definitely looks more elegant. Okay, guys. So enough talking about wrist watch size. 
Let's have a closer look at this cracking little Tudor Prince. Now here we are having a closer look at my Tudor Oyster Date. This is the Ranger Star. The reference number is 74000N and this is the Prince Date model. The year of production for this particular one was 1997 and it's completely all original and includes this fantastic uh, what they refer to as the ranger dial so and those of you would undoubtedly kind of draw comparisons to uh, the explorer and of course the tudor ranger so this is uh, a unisex model uh, but of course subsequently has been kind of put on the back burner a little bit because of this demand for larger pieces so let's get the dimensions out of the way. So first of all, we have a diameter of 34 millimeters. We have a case thickness, just nine millimeters. So very slender and thin, very in keeping with the more kind of mid-century traditional sizes. Lug to lug, we're looking at about 41. So quite wide considering it's, it's a small diameter, so 41. And then a, a lug width of 18 millimeters. So a really beautiful traditional size. And of course, it's gonna be a, a bone of contention with some, some of the viewers because these days it really is quite rare that, that men wear these smaller sizes, but I really think it's a kind of elegant way to go. So the first thing you, will, you notice is this iconic oyster case. Uh, that is of course made by Rolex. The biggest difference between Tudor and the, the Rolex is obviously Tudor are famous for using ETA. This houses the ETA 2824 uh, movement and of course is highly regarded as a very reliable, very robust and it certainly does keep great time. But you also notice there is a hold case uh, and it originally came with this particular bracelet. Now the bracelet is quite interesting, I, I really do like the bracelet. It has little screws for the um, for the links. Sorry, it's a bit, a bit dusty. Let me just give it a wipe. Has screws for the links, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it is, however, just a fold over. You know, there's no fancy clasp. But of course, it is signed Tudor and all the rest of it. So beautiful little um, Tudor shield on the clasp as well. Really nice detail. Micro adjustments on the clasp as well, and another little kind of really like the the center links all polished really nicely made bracelet uh, the only drawback is of course the end links typically rolexes and tudors from this era are hollow uh, i was quite surprised you could hardly tell when it was on but when i took it off um, it was indeed hollow a little bit of a disappointment but uh, you know again it's, it's still a relatively nice bracelet the, the bracelet itself is very nice certainly better than a jubilee it's a different look and I actually i really like the bracelet i must admit uh, but i've since put it on this color just to give it an even more kind of retro look this kind of vintage uh, this is a this is a color it's my recommended luxury italian handmade strap smith just give it look there beautiful detail look at the little string holding that in it's just you know fantastic made very belle made in italy let's have a look at the back screw down case back of course just says geneva tudor prince with the little with the little shields going around there, and there. as indicated by the little um if i just bring this in as indicated here by this little mark going under the shield on the crown the signed crown it is a single lock crown and that indicates that you know it's screwed down of course it's hacking as well so we have a water resistance here of 100 meters similar to kind of like the date just uh, really in, in in its versatility uh, obviously uh, much cheaper because we we haven't got the rolex brand and we have an eta in there Looking at the dial, this, the dial certainly, if this thing ever focuses, the dial is certainly the most impressive thing about it. Beautiful, beautiful 12, 9 and 6 there. And then a little Cyclops at 3 o'clock. Sorry, I do apologise about the dust. And I just love that 
seconds hand. Look at that seconds hand. The little arrow matching the the arrow on the hour hand. Quite a wide hour hand, but I just absolutely adore it. Very tastefully done. We have little loom pips going around the outer scale here. Unfortunately, um, the loom has lost its uh, its capacity to be luminescent. So unfortunately, there is no loom on it. But you know, it's a vintage piece, and it's to be expected. And I and I and I suspect it will it will patina very beautifully in years to come. Smooth bezel, of course. Uh, it needs a little bit of a polish. There are little kind of little scratches here and there um, but overall fantastic condition uh, and of course the serial number is hidden behind the uh, the strap here so very simple but beautiful beautiful dial I really love that uh, and then of course at the bottom we have Swiss made beautiful printed indices done ever so well very elegant Beautiful vintage piece. Again, you have the signed crown, just absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful curve to that cushion, oyster case, just absolutely stunning. So we have a uh, quick set uh, date. Uh, of course, the, the case is stainless steel. The glass is sapphire, so you, you get sapphire as well, which is great because uh, some of the earlier Tudor Prince's were acrylic, of course, so this is really nice sapphire glass, done so well. Look at, look how it sits on the case beautifully. So a really cracking little piece, definitely is a sweet spot in the vintage market, definitely is a sweet spot, uh, because there just isn't the demand, but it's funny because these are unisex, but yet, um, you know, everyone wants these larger pieces, but I, th I think it really works well. Let's do a quick wrist shot close up. So here's the wrist shot, and as you can see, it, it sits beautifully on my wrist, absolutely perfect. Uh, for the skinnier wrist, it is a really nice, wears beautifully, really comfortable. Don't even notice it's on, just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I love that little, that little second hand, I love the hour hand, really is nice. I like this dial, uh, there is a day date version with the, um, with the, uh, the day at the 12 o'clock but I think this particular date version is more similar to a, a kind of explorer so it's like an explorer on a budget I think it matches this strap don't you think I think so I think it really cool combination but you know having said that the bracelet is lovely but um, has got quite a few nicks and little, little marks so I'm, I'm trying to save it for the moment so really lovely lovely piece really over the moon with this and uh, it's nice to have a tune in the collection and it didn't didn't cost that much anyway guys let's take it back to the studio okay welcome back guys now uh, as you can see a fantastic little watch and I hope you agree that it's fitting to to my size so for you guys out there, because I get a lot of emails from guys that have smaller wrists and they want to know what I recommend, I really think the Tudor Prince is the sweet spot in the, in the used second hand market. You can get some really cracking deals. Be patient, don't rush into it, always make sure the seller is reputable. Uh, again, I'll leave the information of my co uh, connection I made with the seller in Hong Kong. Uh, there are some great deals domestically as well, so always you just have to be very, very patient and eventually you'll find what you're looking for. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to say to you guys, don't put off going 34, 36 millimeters because it is a sweet spot. Everybody wants the larger sizes and grab a piece like this for an absolute bargain. If you've got small wrists like me, you can, you can get away with it perfectly fine. It harkens back to a, to a more sophisticated age, definitely, stylistically anyway. I think there are bargains to be had. I'm going to wrap it up for today. That's been my little Tudor review, my, little, my, little, my first Tudor, and my, my only kind of vintage watch in my collection at the moment. Whether it will be a keeper, I don't know. I'd really like to hear your opinions. Personally, I love it. <laughs> I really do love it. There are moments where I think mm, maybe it is a bit too small, but that's because I've been used to, you know, 
wearing my, my larger pieces like this, just so you have an idea of it. It doesn't actually look that small, does it? That's in comparison to my 40mm Squire Heritage, which I am wearing on mesh at the moment. The, the watch doesn't make the man, you know? So really, don't be... Um, if you're smaller wristed, don't be put off, because in many ways, you almost have to be more of a man to get away with wearing a smaller watch because it does require that little bit of extra confidence, you know? Because anyone can strap on a big monstrosity and with this, I really think it's, it's an understated elegance and um, I think with the, with the strap, I'm playing on that kind of vintage look even more. So if you guys ha have seen any great deals and Tudors, please post them down below. Uh, and help our fellow uh, watch buyers out because there are bargains to be had. I actually wouldn't mind picking up another one. I know it sounds crazy, but I think there's such value for money. If you can get a good one in good condition like this, they're not making any more of them. So I think it really is a sweet spot. So if you find any cracking deals, please share them down below. I'd love to see. Okay guys, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please, please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And I'll definitely catch you in the next one. Okay, guys. Ciao.